Hi guys, my name is Mohit Singh Chauhan and we are going to study today things like how are objects stored in memory in Python? How does this thing happen behind the scenes? How do you, you know, when you make a list versus compared to when you make an integer or a boolean, how they are stored in memory? How does this affect your knowledge of doing programming? So what basically happens is that when we are programming, we are basically transferring data from one function to the other or from one class instance to the other class instance. So in this whole process, we are transferring data, but this whole data is going to be stored in memory. So you need to know how references works, how, uh, you know, how different objects are stored in memory so that you can play around with them. Right. So without delay, let's get started. So let's start with very basic data types like x is equals to 10, right? Now, on the right hand side, you can see something like frames and objects. Objects is, as I said, everything in Python is an object, right? And if you know object oriented programming already, you must be knowing what an object is. But for now, for simpler purpose, you can understand that object is any data type that we are going to be created. So for example, we are creating integer. So it contains the value 10 here, right? So this part is actually the integer part, okay? And the frame part contains just the name and a pointer, something like a reference, which is pointing to the memory location, or let's say, which have the memory location for the uh, integer object with value 10. Now, what if I create another object like y is equals to mango? Now, what happens here is, you know, another object, which is a string object is being created in the memory right and there is a y name right and a pointer again to that particular place where that string object with value mango is stored right so this is how simpler objects in python are created right in memory so what we can do is we can now do something more interesting like x is equals to uh, 10 in this format now what basically will happen is i am recreating i'm i'm creating another object which is a string with value ten and i'm reassigning the x name to it now now x was earlier containing a numerical value which is 10 but now that numerical value 10 or let's say that integer object 10 is not at all present in the objects the reason is because nobody is pointing to it nobody is uh, no no variable is assigned to it so that's why we don't need that now right I hope that is understood, right? So, so if I print x, what do you think will be the output here? So the output is going to be the string, which is T E N. So this is how, you know, the very basic objects are stored in memory. Okay. Uh, or let's say the very standard data types, which are not like a collection. Okay. So once we have understood this, we can go on and understand how, uh, you know, uh, collections are stored so let's do that now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a list now which will contain uh, a list of let's say string as well as other things like you know maybe let's say happy coding or some numbers like one two and three okay now once i do that what you can see on the right hand side is we have the whole list as an object and then we have other objects which are happy coding one two and three right so what's happening here is if i ask you how many objects are here in this in this line right so how many objects are being created here in python's memory so you have to understand that there are actually these number of objects this is one object this is another object this is another object this is another object and then this is another object and then one more object is here which is a list itself which is sixth right and then we if, if i ask you how many objects the answer would be six and if i ask you how many names right how many names are here so names or variables right so that answer would be one right which is the value this one which is x so this is how uh, you know a collection is stored in memory now one more thing which we can notice here is that you know since list uh, have indexing right so that's why we are we are shown here like 0 1 
2, 3 and 4, right? These are the index positions where different objects are stored. Now, what about if I go to, uh, if I go to a collection like let's say dictionary or set, which is not, which does not contain indexing. Let's see what happens in that case. So I'm going to create a dictionary like let's say Python 3, Java 8, right? And let's see what happens in this case. So here what we can see is that, you know, since there is no indexing possible, that's why we don't see, uh, you know, those index positions here mentioned. But what we can see is we, we certainly can see that there are, there are pairs here, right? So that's what these pairs are, right? Python 3 and Java 8. There are two items which are there in this dictionary, right? And uh, if I ask you what is the key and the value for that corresponding uh, key, you can, you can see that, you know, there is Python as key and the value would be 3. There is Java as a key and 8 as value for that key. Now, similar to that, you can see that, you know, there is this object which is being pointed by this first thing, right? Let me change the pan color so that we can understand it better. So, this pointer is pointing to Python and similarly, this 3 is being pointed by this corresponding value, which means basically this is a single pair, right? So, this information of, uh, you know, a key and value being paired is also stored in the memory. I, I hope uh, it makes sense, right? So similar to this, now I, we don't have to come here. We will just see some more examples here itself, right? Let me do one thing. Let me make a set now. So it's easy peasy to make a set. I can just remove this colon and I can make them commas here. Now what you can see is that, you know, if I ask you how many objects are here, I hope you can answer this question, right? How many objects are here so the answer for this question would be come on guess it so the correct answer would be that it contains two integers two strings which means four and a set so which means total five objects are here i hope you enjoyed this session right so uh, i will be uploading uh, you know amazing contents like these uh, on my channel and i am uh, you know uh, becoming active again on my youtube channel so guys you know please support me and subscribe and things will always be free here and uh, we will be doing amazing stuff in the upcoming days so that's it guys bye bye have a nice day